Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Crusader Kings 2, Game of Thrones. We're here with the Greyjoy tutorial, and last time we covered all of the character panel in as much detail as I could. Although, in saying that, I think I've already seen some stuff that I might have missed. I'm pretty sure I talked about the titles and stuff last time, but I don't think we went into great detail with that. And I'm not sure if we will this time, because this time I really wanted to talk about military stuff. Maybe we can do both. Maybe we can do both. All right, so if you go back to the character panel for Paramount Dalton, and the same thing for all characters, if you go to the titles here, so the way the titles work is they're arranged from the highest tier rank title to the lowest. That, that's why you have the Lordship of Pike down here and the Kingdom of the Iron Isle. So if you click on the Lordship of Pike, it is essentially this little territory right here. Um, the names for these little spots change between the different mods. Uh, they're called baronies, they've been called uh, uh, counties, they've been called territories. But generally, it's 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 like... um, It's not the smallest thing you can own. It's not the smallest title you can own. The smallest title you can own is probably... For it be a good example, um, go to Lordsport maybe. So, not a castle. Ca I think castles might be higher than cities, or they might be of the same tier. I'm not really sure, but generally, if you have a title that belongs to something down here, it's considered less than the title that's right here. So, for example, uh, Lord Paramount Dalton here controls Pike, this, and this is like the, the... It says County Capital, and then these are just counties in the capital. Castle of, Castle of Cod Hall, Sea Hall of Seagrave, Lordship of Ironholt, and then leading all that is Pike. Pike. So it is his lowest tier uh, title, but it's, but it's not the lowest type of title he could have. Above that is his High Lordship. The, this one also has different names too, so you gotta kind of be careful with that. I know for Elder Kings, they don't call it a High Lordship. They call it, they call it something else. I, I'm not. I think I, like a duchy or, or something. I'm not really sure. But the High Lordship is something that kind of governs. So for this instance, the High Lordship of Pike would govern Pike, Lordsport, and Sawcliffe. All right, so we hop back in here. And another important thing you want to have is de jure, show de jure ties. Landed titles have a de jure hierarchy that never changes, representing ancient and traditional geographical regions. Yes, this is really important. I always tick this whenever I play so I know what is part of what. So that way I can see that Pike is a part of the High Lordship of Pike, which is a part of the... Kingdom of the Iron Isles, which is part of the Seven Kingdoms of the Iron Throne, right? So then, and that, I mean that, that that's pretty much that's pretty much all there is to it. You can do other weird stuff like you can destroy titles, you can make them primary titles, you can look at claimants, you can look at the history. These two are generally pretty useful if you're ever playing through, uh, for example, the Game of Thrones Game of Thrones mod here, and you see a house ruling a location that's not really lore friendly. You can easily go in here and check the titles. So, what would be a good what would be a good example of that? I'm trying to think. I'm not sure if there is any right now. So, if you look at the Kingdom of the Westerlands, you can look at all the people who have ruled. You know who how they how they died, uh, how they inherited the title. So, if you ever find someone like, let's say, we found a uh, a Tully ruling Cast the Rock, you'd be like, well, how the hell did that happen? We can look through the history here. We can see, oh, this is where X Y Z died and was inherited or taken by conquest or something like that. Claimants are also really, really useful, and I find that, especially when you rule the Seven Kingdoms, looking at all the claimants could determine potential threats. So for, for Lord Paramount Dalton here in the Kingdom of the Iron Isles, these are all the claimants. A lot of his children, a lot of his siblings, and Gretchel Volmark and my aunt. I'm not sure how Gretchel got the claim. I'm not sure how she got that. Maybe she was married... Maybe she was married to an Iron King at some point, but she has a claim for it, too. This is great for just de determining who's going to be trying to, uh, well, take your title. And look at the list of people here. I'm not seeing anybody who's ambitious. No, Veron is not ambitious. He's also not ruthless, either. We've got Content, which is great. So she's unlikely to press her claims because she's Content. Right. So I don't see anybody who's too much of a threat, and a lot of them are still children. But you know, when they come of age, they might get um, they might get a little bit more ambitious and try to you know maybe start a faction or something to take the throne away from Dalton. And make primary and destroy. Uh, make primary is in case you've got two tier two titles of the same tier. So for example, if Lord Paramount Dalton had the Kingdom of the I Iron Isles and the Kingdom of the Westerlands. 
he can choose which one he wants to make his primary title. And as far as I can tell, you can do that infinitely as much as you like. And it, and, and, and it changes things like your sigil and the color that uh, your faction takes up on the map. So, you know, if, if he also had the Kingdom of the, of the Westerlands, he could choose to make that his primary title, and then he'd be referred to as a uh, King of the West, and his the Iron Isles would turn red, or vice versa, he could make the Iron Isles the, the primary title, and the Westerlands would turn black along with, um, well, the Iron Isles. So that's, that's, that's what that does. And then destroying, obviously, you destroy the title, um, this is kind of expensive, and it pisses off a lot of people, so I really don't suggest doing this. I would instead suggest, if, if you have the option, go here, right-click on the title, and convert it. Convert it to, a, a, like, a, like, a, like, a paramount status, so that you can give it to someone else without having to destroy it, and you're not automatically giving them, uh, their independence. And, and, and this, this feature here, what, what, what DLC is this from? I'm not sure what DLC this is from, but this I know for, for a fact is from a DLC that allows you to rename stuff. So we could rename the Iron Isles to really whatever we want to call them, you know? We can just, we'll just change this to the Joblivian Isles, Islands, Islands. And the adjective will be not Ironborn, they will be Joblivian. Okay, there we go, Kingdom of the Joblivian Isles. And it says it right here, the Joblivian Isles, awesome. And I may have missed that bit, no, I didn't miss that bit. I think that whatever allows you to rename that stuff, that title, Kingdom of the Joblivian Isles, awesome. We could rename that. It also allows us to, you know, cut our hair. We can grow a beard if we want. Look at that, sexy beard. Pick the sexy beard. And uh, what was it? Oh yeah, and it also, it also allows you to edit your house and sigil. Customize your house. You can do whatever you want. We can rename it. We can name it from Greyjoy to the what is it? The the Jojoy. The Joes. They're the Jojoy. And unfortunately, I probably can't keep the name because I think I'll lose my awesome Kraken sigil. So, but I really, I really should do my homework and <laughs> learn what DLCs I'm talking about. But uh, I promise you, it's this comes with a DLC, and I find it to be very, very worth it. Now then. That covers everything for titles, right? Maybe. It also shows um, Vassal Titles, who's part of the De Jure realm, and it gives you like a breakdown in detail of, you know, who who is a Vassal. High Lordship, High Lordship, Lordship, Lordship. High Lordship of the Seastone Isles. Hmm. Uh, Lord Paramount Dalton directly controls a province in the High Lordship of the Seastone Isles. Where are the Seastone Isles? Oh, you can't... Interesting. Oh, that is cool. That's cool. I didn't. I didn't know that was there. All right. Enough about titles. I'm getting. I'm getting distracted by the titles. Let's do some military stuff. Let's do some military stuff. So I mean, right. So as far as declaring wars go, Game of Thrones is a lot different from other mods that you could play for CK2. And I know that this is one. This is one dramatic difference from just vanilla Crusader Kings 2. Now, to be completely honest, I've only played vanilla CK2 one time. And I got bored with it really, really quickly because, essentially, you had a Cass's Belly to do whatever you want. Cass's Belly in Crusader Kings 2 is essentially your cause to go to war. You, 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 you can't just, you can't just declare war for whatever reason. You need to have a Cass's Belly, some kind of. Because imagine, you know, you're you're trying to, you're trying to get the peasantry and the uh, merchants and the artisans and the soldiers to all fight for you. They're not going to fight for you for no fucking reason. They're not going to fight for you just because you say so, right? Unless they're terrified of you, and, well, that's a different story. So Cass's Belly is generally the mechanism for which you, you use war in Crusader Kings 2. And war is really useful because it gets you all sorts of stuff. It can get you more territory. It can get you resources. It can also... Also, you have to, you have to go to war if you want to defend yourself. Because um, if you're weak... The AI, depending on their characteristics, will try to conquer you. So you need to be good in war, even if you're not going, if, even if you're not planning on expanding. So that said, Crusader Kings 2, the Game of Thrones mod, is different in that it is it it, it has. I find its Cass's belly system to be way more strict. It's it's a lot stricter than Elder Kings. It's a lot stricter than Vanilla Crusader Kings 2. It's a lot stricter than... What are the other mods I've played for this? I don't really know. Warhammer. Warhammer would be another one. So, as far as those games go, you can wage war for generally 
and not not any reason, but take Elder Kings for example, you can declare war on any of your neighbors over like a single county, right? Over a single territory, right? Just just because you cannot do that with with Game of Thrones. And you could do that in in vanilla CK2, but you cannot do that in Game of Thrones. In Game of Thrones there are very specific Cassus Belly, and that's because in at least here in Westeros, there is a strong sense of titles and an inheritance and blood right. So you can't just, we can't just conquer the crag just because it's next door in theory. Like we can't do that because technically the crag belongs to the Lannisters or whoever runs the Westerlands at the time. It's part of their de jure realm. So we can't just take it. And we also can't just invade kingdoms just willy nilly. We need to have a reason for it. So here we can see here, I don't even have the option to declare war on the Westerlands because I don't have a Cassus belly for it. I have no cause to say, well, we're going to invade the West and we're just going to take it because that wouldn't work because the people in the West would never accept our uh, our conquest. They would resist us the whole way and our, our rule would be seen as illegitimate. And then that would be, and, and in theory, that would give other na nations nearby the... Uh, I guess you could say the, the right to invade us in return and they can just say, oh... We're just liberating the West from the Ironborn or something like that. But the Ironborn are different. The Ironborn are different in that they're raiders. They're a historical raiding faction. So what we can do with that is we can raid people. So, and that's probably the most fun thing to do with the Ironborn. I'm going to raise my armies. But first I'm going to have to get them in my boat. So I'm going to go to my fleet levy tab over here. And we can see we got tons and tons of boats. And I'm just going to raise them all, and they pop up around my islands. And then we're going to just click them all, tell them all to move to lo one location. Great. And then we can get, actually let the timer go. And then while they're all traveling, I can raise my actual soldiers. All right. Apparently, we lost some people in that little transaction, or he died. I'm not really sure. We're going to put you there. You can't lead armies. We're going to have you oversee the realm. Here I stand before the drowned god to take up a holy vow of marriage. Oh, I thought we already did this. Hmm. Okay. Guess we didn't do that yet. Apparently, we're still in the middle of a wedding. It's never too early to plan a reaving if you're an Ironborn. Okay, so let's go click our fleets. They're all gathered right here. Now, uh, you could move your fleets around like this, but I don't. I find it to be very disorganized, so I'm going to merge all the units. Yeah, and it goes into a little detail, too. Castle of Pike provides 70, the liege levy of Lord Reaver Harlaw. Cool. I never really looked at that before, but that's cool. And we can see the total number of ships altogether, 250. We can see that they can carry 25,000 soldiers with a load capacity of 1,270 gold. That's going to make us very, very wealthy. Right. Then if we want to actually use our people as looters, we have to convert the army type. And the way we do that is we toggle looter. Setting this unit to be a looter will allow it to raid counties and holdings of other rulers for gold. This will cause the ruler in question to become temporarily hostile towards you, allowing them to, to attack your armies at will. Looter armies only cost 10% maintenance if you are at peace. Ooh, I didn't know that. That's really cool. All right. And then once they're all uh, set to looter, looter status, we can get them on the boats. Now, it's really, really important to remember that you can only set them to looter status in your own territory. In your own territory. You cannot put armies together, form them into one massive legion, send them to the, you know, Casterly Rock, and then set them to looter there. It doesn't work like that. You have to set them to looter in your own territory. And believe me, I understand this rule, and occasionally I still make the mistake of raising my armies, putting them all together, bringing them to some foreign land, and forgetting to toggle them on looter. And that becomes very annoying, because then you have to bring that army back, land it here, set them to looter, get them back on the ships, and go back. It, 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 it makes for a lot of redundant actions, and it's a waste of time. So it's really important to remember, everyone set to looter, then get them on the ships. I'm going to do that for you too, Lonely Light. Okay. So our armies are now making their way to the boats to go on a... Maybe not necessarily a grand reaving, but certainly do some raiding. Reaving is a special action that we can do under the Intrigue for the Ironborn. And um, it has its ups and downs, its, its advantages and disadvantages. But we're going to get them all on the boats. And the boats. And the best thing about raiding is you don't need a Cassus Belly. You can just raid whoever you like. Now then. Can't declare war. Alright, so here's some other, other little uh, requirements. Uh, war is where men prove their mettle. Just make sure you are ready. Of course, 
Lord Hector is not at war with Paramount. You, right, right, you can't declare war on someone you're, that you're already at war with. That's silly. Lord Paramount Dalton must have a valid Cass's belly to declare war. We've already talked about that. We cannot declare war if we have raised any army levies. You cannot declare war if you have any soldiers that are currently mustered. And it's generally a balancing thing. It's, it's you know, if you could raise all your armies, mass them together and then declare war, you would have a huge advantage over over any enemies, and that would be terribly unfair, and in all honesty, that would get boring really, really fast, because you would just curb stomp the AI, because when you raise your vassals' levies, they start at zero morale, and morale is everything when it comes to battles. Your morale is, well, the moment your morale drops to zero, you lose the battle, essentially. Right, so Lord Hector is independent, you know, yeah, that's, it. Lord Hector is independent? He's independent. Why is that? Oh, because there's a mega war going on. Okay, that's another feature that we can talk about at a different time. It's really complicated. But generally, you cannot declare war on individual lords. You'd have to declare war. You have to declare war on whoever their liege is. So normally, we wouldn't be able to declare war on Lord Hector of the Arbor. We would end up be. Uh, we would end up declaring war on Lord Paramount Lionel of the Reach because he is Lord Hector's liege lord. Right, and we look under. There's a couple more. You are not bankrupt, right? You can't have negative. Treasury to declare war, and trust me, you don't want to be fighting wars when you have no money, is not in a non-aggression pack. That is another feature you can get into non-aggression packs, and you guys will not attack each other. You'll just be unable to. And then a non-aggression pact is one step towards a, a formal alliance, so that's important to also know, because sometimes you want to ally. You don't want to be at war with everybody unless, you know, unless that's what you're into. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to increase the time by clicking the little faster button. The feast is winding down, and not only the bedding remains. Dalton and Bridget are stripped of all their garments by the revelers, who are made... Yeah, okay, yep, 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 yep. Get that all, all the way. Now, as far as raiding goes for the Ironborn, I normally hit the Arbor, um, because it's isolated. Um, the North and Beyond the Wall, generally not worth raiding, because they don't really have a lot of gold. I had great fun, and so did everybody else. Hosting a wedding will be removed from Lord Paramount Dalton. We will get held a lavish wedding until... July 26th of 8130, so about a year. So for a year, we're going to have minus 2.5% National Revolt Risk, which is fantastic. Which is fantastic. I'm going to look at my little Revolt Risk step. Oh, yeah, we got to break down all this, too. All right, we'll do, that. we'll do that probably in next episode. We'll talk about all this stuff here. But Revolt Risk is something that's present in every little county, and you can see it under here in the little city tab. And this is, again, something else I'm going to have to cover eventually. But... But because I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much detail all at once, we'll just cover the rest of what this little event does. We get minus 2.5 National Revolt Risk. Our Vassal Opinion goes up by 10. That means this goes up by 10. And we get 40 Prestige. Awesome. For a whole year. That's really helpful. So, yeah, some people some people say uh, that they, they, they live and die by holding weddings. Just... Wedding super important, some people say. So what I just did there was I took my armies that got on the boats and I merged them all into one enormous raiding party of 12,000 men. And trust me, you want a raiding party of 12,000 men. It is very, very good. And then we're going to bring them over here to, to uh, the Northern Sunset Sea. We're going to pick up these 100 guys who also want to get in on the, the looting and raiding. And then we'll probably just hit the Arbor. That's normally what I always do. Or Lease. Ooh, we could hit Lease, too. Shit, I forgot about that. Lease is like an even bigger version of the Arbor. Um, Archeon, Shirako of Lease is leading troops in Lake of Mirth. They are defending against Lord Master Sirio. And defending against Princess Rhaenyra. And the Dance of Dragons. So Lease looks like it's open to us. It looks like there's no armies standing here. Actually, you know what? We could actually... No, we can't. I would put my emissary here, my justiciar, who's also kind of a diplomat, or my spy master here, just to get vision of what's going on here. But you know what? We can always just sail the boats over there and you know give it give it a look see. If lease is open, we will we will raid lease because it's, it's essentially an even wealthier and um, yeah, just it's a, it's a it's it's an even wealthier version of the arbor. Or is it? Let's see, possible loot is 54.5 gold, max loot is 87.5 gold, 87, lease is 92. So lease is a little bit better than, than the arbor. 
All right, and as we sail through the Red Wine Straits, we can see that the Arbor has no standing armies on it, so it is open for raiding. But we're also going to check out Lease, and we're going to see what's going on over there. And essentially, all we have to do is land our troops, and they will immediately begin looting the county. And we will be able to see county loot right here. What is that? Marginal slave labor. Hmm, okay. We will start depleting this of the gold. And the reason why the boats here have a load capacity is because you don't get that gold right away. All right. Least looks like it's open to us. Let's land all the troops. Now, here's hoping we don't have really, really bad attrition, because sometimes that is the case. But we will land our troops here in Lease, and we will begin plundering it. And this little bar of gold here will begin to deplete. Ah, there we go. Oh, let's toggle the, the siege view. There we go. We're taking the loot from the county, and we are bringing it onto the boats. An outbreak of disease in the camps outside the walls. Yep. Little events about the sieges are going to pop up right here. So sometimes it's important, but sometimes, most of the time, it's not. So we're taking all the loot off out of the county and putting it on our boats. We've got 22 gold out of 1,025. This little loot, this little icon here shows you if, you're, if your uh, army is looting or not. This proven can potentially be looted for 3.671 gold every four days. This is split between all looting units. Let's see, any gold this unit loots will be loaded onto a fleet in Lysine Coast. The fleet must return home to secure the gold. We got a lot of outbreak of disease outside the walls of Lease, so that's not very good, but it's not the end of the world. So, eventually, when we run out of stuff we can take just off the island, it really, four times outbreak of disease? Jesus, come on. So, you can see here it's turned red and says not able to loot. That means you've taken all of the loot that's available in the county and you can no longer take anything of value. Now what we're doing is essentially sieging, we're sieging the, 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 the county capital lease and when it falls, we're going to loot the hell out of the place. Which will give us lots of gold, prestige, and access to um, slaves and salt wives for the ironborn. For everyone else, I think it would be concubines. The, the only other factions I know of that can do this would be your pirate factions, who are going to be the guys hanging out here on these islands in the middle. You can see they worship the pirate gods, which is essentially just plunder. And pirates, yeah, pirates can be pretty fun. Pir uh, if, if you want to try something new and your, your goal isn't to just conquer the whole world, playing as a pirate can be an interesting challenge, and it can be fun at the same time. So while they're doing that... What can we talk about? We can talk about this. Uh, Lord per okay, interesting little event. Lord Paramount Dalton, her grace has issued a decree declaring that all kinsmen of Aegon Targaryen shall henceforth be considered enemies of the realm. Any person offering assistance to said kinsmen shall suffer the judgment of the crown. This is the decree of Rhaenyra of the House Targaryen, the first of her name, Queen of the Iron Throne. So Rhaenyra has won... The, uh, she has won the Dance of Dragons, so she now rules. Ooh, Amont one eye died in the dungeons of Rhaenyra. Hmm. Okay. I wonder why she has a regency. She doesn't seem to be incapable or anything, or in hiding, so... Okay, gotcha. So, these... Don't help these people. Got it. Uh, Lord Primo Dalton, the realm is in a state of war. Uh, why? Defending against Lord Hector in War of Arbor Independence. Defending against... Lord Paramount, Jason. All oh, the Westerlanders are trying to get independence, and so they're declaring war against Queen Rhaenyra. Hmm. Okay, this might be... Uh, uh, how do I explain this? This isn't really what I intended to explain this episode, but that's okay. Um, Lord Paramount Dalton, the realm is in a state of war, and it's such as I, as your liege queen, to command that you provide men to support my armies. Regards, Rhaenyra of the House Targaryen, Queen of the Iron Throne. Does she still ride a dragon? She still rides a dragon, right? Yes. And she still is married to King Daemond, who rides Caraxes. Is... 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 um... What is it? Is... Ooh, doesn't seem like Vagar is still alive, though. Hmm. I will not concern myself for now. The Rebel's cause is just. Now it is time to break free. Okay, this is a tutorial, so I'm not going to get too ambitious with what I'm doing here. So I guess what I'll do is I'll just not concern myself for this. I don't care. Whatever they do, I don't I don't give a damn. It doesn't matter to me. Let's talk about this panel here quickly. This is the little land and title panel. Oh, there's a lot of shit here. Um, this is lease. Actually, you know what? There's way too much stuff to talk about here, so I'm not going to talk about that. 
Instead, we're just going to focus on what we're doing with our... I, I, Come on, I just told you. I, I have no interest in that. Leave me alone. So and so, raiding here works the same way as kind of just mil war in general. You're, you've got your standing army here, although in a formal war, in a formal war, you the defenders of Lee successfully raided the camp of the besiegers, inflicting heavy casualties. Oh, great. Great. So in war, it works the same way, only you cannot loot. You cannot loot in war because if you could then your regular armies would loot and there'd be no point for raiding. So you cannot loot when you're in a formal war. You also cannot win if you have an army set in the looting stance and you're fighting an enemy. They have to be out of out of raiding stance in normal formal formal war stance and they have to conquer things the same way that we're doing right here. And it's just the same thing. You park your army on top of whatever it is you want to conquer and you wait for well, you you don't have to wait, but the idea is you want to defeat the morale of the defenders. See, this is your army, this is our army, and our average morale, and our total morale, and this is the morale of, of the defenders. Now, we can either assault it, attempt an assault, we can order an assault on the holding, but we might take serious losses if we attempt to do so, and that often is the case. You will take a lot of losses, and I've even seen instances where an army of 4,000 can hold off 10,000 in, 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 in an assault, so, right now, we're just kind of starving them out. Oh, it even breaks down how much... See, they have 40% 40, 40 morale. They're losing 4.6 every 12 days. Base is minus 50. Fort level gives it times 0 0.076. And they're outnumbered. So, times 1.2 something, something, something. So, the more troops you have, the faster they're going to lose morale. And as soon as morale hits zero, they surrender. We loot the capital. That'll be awesome. And then, uh, yeah, someone else rides a dragon. I don't care about that doesn't interest me. Ooh, we can talk about all of this too. God, that's a lot. That's a lot to talk about. Don't really have a I don't, don't really have a lot of time left. Let's see. We can also toggle the siege view. Yes. That's important for when you want to see how much of the loot you've taken or if you want to look at this. Now, for the sake of God damn it, leave me alone. I don't care about the queen. Now, for the sake of this raid, I think I might attempt an assault so you guys can see really what happens. So, some, so a lot of the times, Jesus, this game is just obsessed with interrupting me. So, when it comes to assaults, is that is that what I was, what, I was just going to say something and I forgot. God damn it, you interrupted me and now I forgot what I was talking about. Son of a bitch. No, I don't care. Launch assault. Oh, now I remembered. Now I remembered. Sometimes, sometimes assaults will take a number of days to complete the, con yeah, here, here we are. Attempt an assault, we cannot. We need another 90 days to complete the construction of our siege weapons. So siege weapons and stuff sometimes need to be created. Sometimes they don't, depending on what kind of county it is that you're trying to take. Um, there are going to be instances of places where you can't assault because the fort level is just too damn high. So, for example, Dragonstone here in the Blackwater Bay, Storm's End, uh, High Garden, Casterly Rock. These are really, really formidable castles and you will not be able to, 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 to assault them, so you, we pretty much have to siege them. But because Lys is essentially a city, we were able to just walk right in. And we didn't take that many casualties either. We took like 700. That's awesome. And we killed 4,000. My lord, we have taken Lys, but Archon Shirako Lohar is not here. Okay? Have his family put in the dungeon then. We lose 30 piety. Hmm. Take his family into house arrest. Hmm. Let's see. Maria, Misery, the White Worm. Gross. Syria, who's 51. Talia Lohar. So I'm guessing we can take most of his family. Yeah, we'll take his family. Lisa has fallen to our band of reavers. Perhaps I should claim a salt wife. So salt wife is a concubine. And it is pretty common for the Ironborn to do this. And when you take a salt wife, at least for the concu at least for the Ironborn. If it's a particularly young concubine, you'll get prestige over time. We don't really want concubines right now, though, because, like I said, I've covered this in the first episode. Um, there is a chance that they can kill you. So, and judging by, I mean, these are not young, you know, concubines. They're old. They're old. So we don't we don't want to do anything with that. But we can see. Lise has been looted of 192 gold by Lord Paramount Dalton the Red Kraken. Looters have destroyed the trade post in Lise. Yes, we have. 
Ooh, and there's more cities we can take too. And if we look at our boats here, we now have 245 gold out of 1,000. So when you're playing as the Ironborn and you have control of the entire Iron Fleet, you can get stupidly wealthy. You can get so much cash, it's ridiculous. And then it's going to be the same process for the Siege of the Lysine Harbor, and then the Pleasure Gardens, and then the Temple of Lys before we hit our first castle. <laughs> the last three are castles. All right, special actions? Ooh, I can ransom the prisoners. Oh, yeah, I can. Yes, I can. But that will have to wait until the next episode. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this episode or you found it useful or informative, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as always. This has been Crusader Kings 2, the Great Joy Tutorial. I have been the Golden Joe Oblivion, and until next time, I will see you all later.